This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Med Canadian's food truck will be in Cary this, sure I'm saying it right, yep, this Thursday at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 p.m. for some barbecue and bingo. And also this Friday, they'll be up in Tiffin at the Superior Auto from noon to four. And this Saturday, up in Tiffin as well, at the Tiffin Brewery again. So you can get some dinner at the Tiffin Brewery from five to nine o'clock this Saturday. Check out the um, Mad Canadian social media sites to find out more information where he and his food trucks are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt. I apologize. (laughs) Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who is the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to work out some old habits. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. Kyle had it on my mind. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned, micro batch roasting company. They are based out of Toledo, Ohio, more specifically Perrysburg. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, Integrity is the core value of what they do. Uh, They import straight from farms in faraway places such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia. Um, And it's not limited to that either. Uh, Some of their most uh, popular flavors are available in K-Cup. They have subscribe and save services. They have um, free shipping over $50 and gift cards are also available. But you can find all of that and more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Hopefully everyone had a good weekend here. Get your day started right with the Another good old episode of the soup cast here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Kyle, I feel like we have a lot to talk about, so I don't think I want to waste too much time. Let's rejoin our audio only listeners. Sure thing. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not going to complain. Um, you know, if we're just going to sort of jump right into the Ohio State side of things, and I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, you know, it's kind of it, these weekends. This weekend was never going to be great because it's a it's a lose lose, right? Because if Ohio State looks great, which for the most part they did, you just sort of shrug and you say, eh, it was Akron. But but we also know that if they had played poorly, you know, we would have been lighting dumpsters on fire and and calling for people's heads and and so on and so forth. So I just want to say for the. For the sake of all of it, for the sake of this entire episode. I just one big caveat, because we're going to talk about how Ohio State played and Ohio State played well. But let me just put this as a blanket asterisk right at the front of the show. Yes, it was Akron. I I don't feel like saying it a thousand times. And this is going to come across as a positive show because the team played positively. That being said, yes, we acknowledge it was Akron. Yes, we acknowledge this is the worst team by far on Ohio State's schedule this year. Worst team by far. Not not even close. Worst team by far. Just so blanket asterisks right at the top of the show for that. So I just we're going to have a positive show today. And just that's the last thing I want is to look at the comments and someone saying, yeah, but it was. Yeah, we know it was Akron. We know we understand. Yep. All right, let's let's hop into it. Ohio State wins 59 to 7. Ohio State scores 59 unanswered points after Akron takes their second drive. For a touchdown, and after that second drive, chaos went 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 up in 
Buckeye Twitter and yeah, as I was trying to tell people all week, just relax. This is this is not going to be this defense is not going to fix over overnight. It's not going to fix over course of a week or two weeks, but just slow steps is all we ask for. Slow improvements every week, and I think we saw that here. My takeaway from this game: they took care of business. Great, they were able to pass. They were able to run, and I think the key thing, Jared, especially after that second drive, they made adjustments and they just stopped what Akron wanted to do. And that was to get DJ to do his thing. They, they held him to 17 yards. They held him to 17 when he's, when he, we saw, especially in those first two drives um, and a few other plays too. He's able to make guys miss and break a long one. And Ohio State did a very, very good job of containing him. So hats off to the, to the coaching staff. Of, of just mixing things up and confusing him. So yeah, great may, job by the coaching staff. May, maybe potentially specifically Matt Barnes, who this is his second game calling the defense. And yeah, they mixed things up and they adjusted after letting up what felt like a very familiar. That's just that's how I'm going to describe what that was, was a very familiar drive for Ohio State fans by Akron. By the way, just sort of looking at the chat we have going down here um, from our from our patrons, from our sloop cats. Um, yeah, love to DJ Irons. Uh, his offensive line didn't help him out a ton. His wide receivers didn't help him out a ton. But. Yeah, much love to DJ Irons. I put him in the thumbnail for a reason. He's a very talented quarterback. Um, I it's 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 a shame he plays for Akron. I, I don't I don't know of a nicer way of saying it than that. So let, let's go ahead and start with the grades here. Uh, let's start with let's start with the defense this time, Jared. Okay, because that's what a lot of people in our in our chats talking about. Defensive line, defensive line just played outstanding best they've looked i won't i won't repeat because we already mentioned it jared already mentioned it here but they looked great they this is the best that they've looked and they more than doubled their sacks for the year they had four sacks coming into this game and they had nine sacks uh in this game here it's almost almost remnants of the what the browns did to um to chicago in, in sunday's game just they they had they did everything that they wanted to and and made DJ Irons just uncomfortable. Yeah, th- this was the defensive line that we expected to see all year, and and didn't get. Again, blanket asterisks. Yes, it's Akron, um, but it's 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 it's. I think it's more than that, right? Like, I mean, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. It's so hard to tell, especially along the line because it's such a one-on-one competition or not always one-on-one, but you know what I'm saying with a wide receiver or a quarterback, you can sort of independently see the routes they're running and how crisp the throw is. You can kind of make some assessments that are. Well, uh, what's the word I'm looking for that, that are not dependent upon the competition to understand, you know, what a crisp route looks like and what a crisp this or that looks like, but with the defensive line, it's very hard to tell, but this is the performance specifically out of Pascal Garrett that we've been waiting to see all year. Uh, we had our very just, first JT uh, Tui Molau start, and he had some really nice plays. We saw Jack Sawyer get plenty of snaps this game, and he looked really good. Um, are we, if he got his first sack. He did. Jack Sawyer got his first sack as well. Yep. Oh, and by the way, I, I don't know. It, it kind of looks like a simple play, but he's following DJ Irons out into the flat. Irons then cuts back inside. What looked like it was going to be a rollout all the way cuts back inside. Sawyer makes an adjustment that I, I promise you, especially a guy as big and as athletic as Irons, to make that adjustment and still make that tackle. I promise you that is so much harder than it looks. That is so to so much harder than it looks. It was an amazing play. Uh, You you see that potential. You see where that's coming from. Um, 
if we're talking about the defense, oh, and by the way, like my new favorite player on the Ohio State Buckeyes is is, is Ty Leak. I there there's there's no there's no two ways about that. Um, so so grading wise here, and that kind of goes into what I want to talk about here. So we the ratings here we have just defensive line in general, but and today I kind of want to split that up. Defensive tackles, I want to give them an A plus. I thought yeah. the defensive tackles. With Williams, with Garrett, both combining five sacks, A plus, A plus, just as many yeah. pluses as you can write. Just, just like the Christmas story where the teachers like and plus and plus and plus. Yeah, that was the defensive tackles in this game. Defensive ends, I'd probably give them a B plus. I thought the defensive ends did pretty well. Uh, Jack Sawyer had a sack there. I'm looking who who else here. Uh, Antoine Jackson also got a got a sack in there as well. Uh, I know he's a defensive tackle, so there, there's that's six. That's six from their defensive tackle sacks yeah. right there. Uh, Cage, Cage even had a sack, so that's seven. That's seven yeah. sacks. Um, just going down the line here. Oh, Hamilton, eight of the nine sacks were defensive tackles. Yeah, it's it's it, as you said, it's an A plus 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 for the defensive tackles. I would give the defensive ends a. Uh, a bit more of an A minus. I understand they didn't get the sacks, but they still got home a lot. They still forced the ball to be flushed a lot. Um, I, you don't have to get the sack to get the play, but yeah, it's still like an A minus in my in my opinion. Okay, so we'll give the defensive line a solid A then. Yeah, a solid A overall. Okay, linebackers. I thought linebackers played a lot better here. Yeah. The the first two drives were very, very iffy, but yep. adjustments again. I think a lot of that coming from coaching scheme making adjustment adjustments, and I think after those two drives, settled down, made plays, great open field uh, tackles uh, by the linebackers and corners too. But with the linebackers, I'd probably give them a B plus. I thought they did a really good job uh, as a whole. Yeah, and. For I, I, they're starting to limit the rotation, and that rotation just got even more limited this past week with uh, departures from two linebackers, one willingly and and one less so. Um, so not not that either of those guys were seeing a ton of snaps anyway, but by but like Steel Chambers, I thought played incredibly well. Um, Yep. I'm starting to wonder, Kyle, in all honesty, I'm starting to wonder if the two starting linebackers should be Simon and Chambers. You can't you can't leave out Mitchell. Mitchell had a great game as well. Chambers had five tackles. Uh, Mitchell had four tackles. Uh, two of those four tackles were for loss. Mitchell had a great game. He was all over the field, but I- I, I I can't I can't blame you with Cody Simon. He doesn't really put up too much stats in, in this game, but he did have the the interception there that really paints an image in people's minds. Like, oh, Cody Simon had great. He had he had that one interception uh, in the game there. But man, Chambers and Mitchell played lights out in this game. I, I still think Mitchell's a bit of a Borland esque. Uh, issue in regards to pass coverage. I feel like Steel Chambers is more athletic and especially if you're going to start playing some of these more athletic teams, they're going to spread you out more. Um I'm I feel like the success you're going to get is from your more athletic guys and your more athletic guys are Chambers and so uh, Chambers and Simon. T- this group here B+ plus. Uh, I'm not willing to. I'll just say B. I, I okay. would give Simon more than that, but I'm just I'm just I don't think I'm willing to give him a plus yet. All right. Corners. What would you give the corners here? Uh, I thought the pl- corners played excellently. They were, uh, you know, Akron, 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 Akron. But I thought the corners played very well. Um, Banks does not appear to be 100 percent yet. Um, but I think Martinez continues to grow and get better. Um, I think that it goes without saying that Burke is tremendous. Like I, 
Ohio State, Kyle, Ohio State started four true freshmen this game. Started four true freshmen this game. And like, I, I'm, I've, I, I'm honestly to the point where I have forgotten Burke's a true freshman. Like, yeah. he's he's just a veteran at this point. That's how he's playing. He's tremendous. Um, Cam Brown did not play in this game. Um, I assume just sort of getting rest because he's yep. still coming back from the Achilles injuries. It's just Akron. You know, you get Banks back. You let Banks play in his stead. Um, I thought I thought Williamson had a pretty decent game, too. And surprisingly, Jared, who has the most tackles of all the corners, is probably a favorite in our Sloop Cat section here. Number one, Super Demario McCall. I'm just going to say that it's not necessarily a good thing as a corner when you have a bunch of tackles. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> but no, he's doing he's yeah. doing really well for a guy who's never played cornerback before playing cornerback. He had a couple oh, really had, nice couple. pass deflections. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, I thought for the time he was in there, I thought he was very solid there. Now, I don't expect him to be up there when tougher competition comes, but I thought for what he was in there, uh, yeah, exactly like what Buckeye Zach Demario went out there wanting to prove something and wants to play. And I mean, as Nomad just kid, said, he fifth, yeah, he just wants to play. Fifth year senior here, fifth year or sixth year, I forget how many years he's been here, but seven, eight, nine, long 10. time. He, he's long he's time. on that JT Barrett scholarship plan or Aaron or Aaron Craft. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I thought he did very well. Um, really happy with him. So I'd give the corners an A. I'd give them an A. They came, they came up with an, a pick six uh, in the first half, second half. I forget which one. It was, uh, yeah, it was in the first half. Uh, they had a pick six there. And they held, they held Akron to 150 yards passing. Yeah, hats off. And they made some great tackles out in open space too. So I thought that was one thing that I really liked from this defense in this game was making those open field tackles, especially after those first two drives. After that, stellar tackle, tackling after uh, that. So A for the corners? Yeah, A for the corners. Safeties? You know, I didn't, I don't find, I didn't find myself thinking about the safeties much this game, which I think is what you want from the safeties. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, because of the yeah, because of that, I'd give him an A too. They didn't have to do much in this game, and I, I think that's a good thing. That that tells you that Chat, your defensive your line's getting the pressure. Your your defensive line's getting pressure. That means your corners are locking down, and the safeties don't have to really do much. So A A minus somewhere around that range, I, I'd I'd give them. Yeah, we got a B plus down in the chat from Nomad. Um, a minus B plus. Um, I'm I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm definitely getting my um, preference for who I want the safety to be and to not to be. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll say that much. Um, I really like Hickman. I know that they're going to start moving Turner back there since they have a lot of corners right now, but don't necessarily have a lot of safeties with Proctor out. I know they're practicing Ryan Turner back there. Um, but ransom's got to be quite a bit of time as well. Yeah. Um, I, I just more, the more Hickman, the better with Proctor mm -hmm. out, the more Hickman, the better, I would say, uh, he had a pick six as an example. Yep. All right, Jared. Uh, we are at 19 minute mark here. So before we go into the offense, let's go ahead and take a quick ad break here. Let's do that. Kyle, the Iron Bean Coffee brother. Company, I, Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I went first on the second one. Go right ahead, Jared. All right. Iron Bean Coffee comes. Let's talk about some of the coffees. Scott, we're going to try and talk about a bunch of the coffees in one ad read this time. Okay, here we go. Unicorn. Uh, it's their special R&D coffee. It's a flavored coffee. What is it? You don't know. That's part of the fun. That's part of the adventure. Uh, there's the Fierce, which is a darker coffee, 100 made of 100% Arabica beans. Um, there's the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. This is a medium roast coffee. Um, that has a really great balance of flavor and aroma. Uh, there's the Ride or Die, uh, which is another medium roast coffee that's made from Brazilian yellow bourbon beans. Uh, there's the Cast Iron, uh, 
uh, which is 100, another medium roast made from 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, there's the Odin, the Thor, and the Loki, which is a dark, a medium dark and a light medium, uh, respectively. There's the Rocco, which you can get in a medium roast or a dark roast. There's the drink from the skull of your enemy, which is personally my favorite dark roast in the lineup. Um, it has notes of uh, cedar and tobacco and wine and spice. Uh, there's the fear no evil, uh, which is not even a dark roast. It's a black roast. It's the darkest roast you can get from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. It's a step past dark. Um, then there's the fear no evil. Uh, excuse me. I did I mess that up? Drink from your skull of your enemy. Yeah, the, the fear no evil is the black roast. The integrity is their mainstay flagship roast. Uh, makes a great espresso. Um, and I, you know, I think that's I think that was a lot. So I think we'll leave it at that. I think maybe I'll pick up some of the flavored coffees in the next ad or er, in the Tuesday ad read. So I'm gonna talk about the flavored coffees in the Tuesday ad read. Uh, but if you want to check out those for yourself right now, you can just go to Iron Bean coffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster this episode is also brought to you by the mckinney barbecue company uh talked about his food truck for for quite a while here so why 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 should you go get a uh some of the mad canadian uh barbecue company's food here well let me let me read some of the reviews that some real life people actually went and got his food and rated here so Here's somebody said saying about the Mad Canadian food truck. Best food truck around, hands down. Barbecue is smoked right there on location and is always fresh that day. Brisket and pork is never dry and always full of flavors that melt in your mouth. The sides are also made that day and are absolutely phenomenal. Owner and crew are top-notch and very friendly. Highly recommend giving them a try. Many, many more posts just like that uh, all around social media, on on Google reviews, all over. Give them a try. Uh, mentioned where they were going to be at the top of the show. You can check out his social media if you if you didn't hear that or want to hear more information about him. Search Mad Canadian Barbecue or TMC BBQ on social media, Facebook, Twitter, for more information. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company or the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's get into grading the offense. I'm going to go ahead and renew our yes, we know they played Akron asterisk. Uh, and then let's get into talking about the quarterbacks. So, Kyle, All right, you want to start with? Yeah, let's start with the quarterbacks. My first question to you, question on everyone's mind. Is there a quarterback controversy? Fan sided, no. which is not a blog I have any respect for, posted I something today like, well, well Let's let's figure out where CJ Stroud's going to transfer to in the offseason. And it's just like we aren't there yet. It's this, what we saw at the beginning of the game is the same thing we saw with CJ Stroud. You got a young freshman starting a game, a lot of nerves going on, a lot of mistakes. And you saw balls just high, throwing high balls that are thrown too wide. Same things that we saw with C.J. Stroud. So it looked like C.J. Stroud just put on a different number that first drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I thought once Kyle McCord kind of settled down. Yeah, it was I like thought he did he, drive he, he one did a lot better. Drive one was a complete disaster. Total disaster mm -hmm. on Kyle McCord. Drive two, they protected him. They did. He didn't throw a ball more than two yards past the line of scrimmage. That entire second drive, it well, was he didn't at all that second that second drive he didn't throw it beyond the line of scrimmage. Everything was behind. Yeah, and then the third drive they let him get the ball a few yards past the line. Like they sort of then it was it was kind of like when the pool's a little too cold and you got to ease your foot in. That that's what they started doing. Um, so much much like with. Much like with Stroud, they sort of had to bring him along a little bit slowly. Um, which is fine. And by once he sort of hit, once he hit his stride, 
It was pretty. It was very, very pretty. Um, he, aside from like one drive where he got sacked twice, he had a clean pocket the entire game, which is a huge advantage. His playbook was incredibly limited compared to what they were asking CJ Stroud to do, which is a huge advantage. Now, the question then is, well, was the playbook limited because he's not as practiced as CJ Stroud? Or is the playbook limited because it was Akron? Because then we saw Miller come in in the second half. And yeah, it's both. It has to be both. I mean, it's 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 yeah. it's the chicken or the egg. It's, it's it's impossible to tell. And then Miller came in and had an even more limited playbook. One, to, why? Well, because the game was over. And also, he's probably the least practiced of the three. Um, so. Did McCord look better in this game than we saw CJ Stroud maybe ever look? Yeah, I, I think so. Although I think CJ Stroud had a really good game against much better. If you factor in the competition, CJ Stroud, I think, had a better game against Oregon. Um, but that again, that's factoring in the competition and what was being asked of him to do, which was come back from a deficit. And it was a much considering the challenge in front of him. I, I think it was a maybe a better game, but that's with a lot of like asterisks and sliders and so on and so forth. Um, I'm, I ultimately, the question I think has to be, why did Stroud really sit? Because we don't know. That's, that's probably, that's really only something that probably day knows. And how close were they competition wise? How close are they competition wise? Does day see them as one a and one B will we see Stroud rest again next week? Because if he was just resting, then you bring him back out for big 10 play. If, if that's what this really was. Ultimately, in my opinion, I'm trusting Ryan day, whatever Ryan day, whoever Ryan day decides to put out there. That's who I'm trusting. That's my take on the quarterback competition. Ryan day is working with a lot more information than the rest of us have. Yep. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably give the quarterbacks a B overall. Some passes, some passes they should have made. They'd have an interception. Uh, three for just under 400 yards. So I thought they did what they needed to do against Akron. Gangland so I'd, I'd says Stroud's arm talent is so much better, but McCord didn't look horrible. I I did not see that for what it's worth. I think McCord's arm strength is... I, I, I did not. I, I, it's not an observation I share. For what it's worth, mm -hmm. but. All right. All right. Moving on. So you think B? Would you I, I B think that's or? a little I think that's a little rough. I, I think. Considering what they were asked to do, they the wide receivers made the quarterbacks look better, statistically speaking, than the quarterbacks, I think, maybe actually were. Uh, but still, considering what they were asked to do, they did it aside from like one or two drives. So A minus B plus either one of those I'd be fine with. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, I definitely wanted to argue with that, but I uh, want to move on here. Uh, running backs. A. 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 A with the running backs. I don't even think we need to talk too much about this. Henderson only had only carried the ball eight times. And just under 100 yards there, he's averaging. I agree now with that, Stuart. For, he's now averaging, what is it, about nine and a half yards a pop for the year yeah. right now. And only have, have only had to carry it like just over 40 times. And that's just crazy to, crazy to hear. So, yeah, A, Master Teague looked pretty well, pretty good. Um, Chop looked, looked pretty good when he had his time in there. And and Pryor, Pryor came in and got his first touchdown as well. So we got to spread the ball. I'm sorry, Master Teague with, also looked good for a running back. Master he, Teague, he looked, he looked pretty good. Yes, Master Teague looked pretty good. Okay, so just for the record, we're giving them an A, and then we also talk. So we talked about how the running backs, no matter who was carrying the ball, looked good, and then we also talked about how, aside from maybe one drive that the quarterbacks were completely clean all game. So if all of the running backs looked good and if the quarterbacks were pretty much clean the entire game, Kyle, 
What does that mean? What do we give the offensive line? Give the offensive line an A. We I give them an them A+. Plus. A. Um, I, I thought they played a relatively flawless game. Again, there's that one drive where Akron sent the house twice and got to the quarterback. I, that one drive aside, I thought they played a pretty flawless game. Again, Asterix, Akron, we get it. But like they played a flawless game. I give them an A+. Plus. Okay, in the tight ends. I, I have that I, question, I they, Stuart. They, Don't worry. We, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I I thought the tight ends here, I, I'd give them an A too. Uh, Scott Gee looked pretty good in this game, and I, I thought Scott? the tight ends blocked. Gee Scott? Yes. Um, I, I thought the tight ends, I thought the tight ends looked pretty good, uh, blocked really well, um, creating that, um, I'm drawing a blank on the word right now, but the kind of like the crack, crack block. Yeah. That's it. And all that. So I, I thought they did really well. Uh, and the wide receivers. A plus. Yeah. A. I'd give them an A. Yeah. I thought the wide receivers did exactly what they needed to do, especially the early on when they. Especially those first few drives, trying to try to get some confidence in McCord there. Just give the ball as quick as you can to. <laughs> To um to Alave to Wilson, and man, Jackson Jackson Smith Njigba just went off in this game. He went off. He he had himself a great game. And let's also talk about like the one opportunity that Abuka got. <laughs> I wanted him to get that touchdown so bad. Man, yeah, yeah. he his, deserved his it. First, his first catch there, and he goes what was eighty five yards, I believe it was. Yeah. By the way, a lot of offensive line hoping for a touchdown there. Yeah, a lot of offensive line talk continuing in our chat down here. Um, Just just going to go ahead and say this in regards to the offensive line, just as an additional feather in their cap, they were down two starters. Like this is also not Ohio State at the 100 percent that we expected it to be at the beginning of the year. Mm hmm. So yeah. speaking of which, I think that takes us to an Ask Sloopcast question. Oh, coaching? Fine. Yeah, you you, so, you put a B plus in the notes. That's that's fine. I'm good with that. I thought B plus with, with them making changes after those first, first few drives. Yeah, B plus for being able to change and not just stay with the same scheme all game long. So Ask Sloopcast question from Stuart underscore E4 US Vet. Uh, does Harry Miller fit back into the lineup when he's available or is Whipler locked down the center spot? That's a fantastic question. And I'm not sure. Um, I, I, it, right now I'm kind of on the side of not messing with a good thing. And I think Whipler's playing really well. Um, yeah, we don't not, know why yeah. we still don't know why the, the Harry Miller situation is every bit as puzzling as the seven banks situation was. Yeah. It, yeah. You're not seeing, I don't even see, I, I don't think we've seen any like bad snaps at all yet. So yeah, I agree with Jared. Don't mess with something that's working really well. The, the chemistry is there. Just got to get, uh, just got to get, uh, just got to get healthy right now. Get ready for a big 10 play. Yeah. I, but uh, you know, I, e- even if, like, I think the only way Harry Miller immediately st- uh, s- steps back into the starting lineup for me is if the guard spot is still open because we, you know, because Thayer Mumford is potentially still out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Another question from Stuart. With all the five stars at defensive end, why is our best pass rush coming from the interior? Well, first and foremost, I would I just I don't know a ton about what Akron offers um, as far as their offensive line. Like I, I, could, I could maybe it was a deficiency in Akron. Maybe the defensive ends were attempting to keep contain and therefore weren't. Coming in as hard as they potentially would if they were playing a more stationary quarterback. I've not had a chance to rewatch the game yet, um, but then there's. All season. Um, well, you say all season, but I don't think the defensive tackles played 
have been getting pressure on the quarterback all season. Um, I don't think anyone was getting pressure on the quarterback all season. So the question is, what's the anomaly here? Or maybe the question is, is this a indication of improvement from the defensive tackles? And I, I don't necessarily know that that's the case or if this was just, hey, it was Akron. Yep. All right, here, here's a here's a great question from Buckeye Zach. Did Akron answer any of our questions about this Buckeyes team or is Akron just that bad? It's for for it's it's sort of position by position. I think on one hand, you can sort of watch a player, how they're executing and you know what they're doing regardless of the competition in front of them. And for some positions, like I was saying this earlier, I'll say it briefly again. For some positions, you can tell if someone's running a clean route and you can tell if someone's throwing a clean ball. Um, sometimes those are a little bit easier to tell, but with like a defensive line, because you're just immediately engaging the opponent, it's much more difficult to tell. Um, it's, it's, it has to be a little bit of both. Um, did, did it answer any of our questions? Any of our questions? I think we know that if McCord has to play, he can. I, I think that's a thing we know. Um, I think we continue to know that Tyleek Williams is a monster. <laughs> like we know that. Um, and we're, but, to, and we're we're seeing changes with the defensive scheme, so not seeing the same the same scheme that we've seen the first couple of games. We're we're seeing small steps here. So I like I like what I like what we're seeing in the defense now. It just just got to get better and execute now. And, and you know how much of it is you know we see the defense playing better. A huge chunk of it is that it was Akron. Like let's not gloss over that. But also, I think we're seeing improvement from the defensive play calling, mixing things up. So some of that, some of that credit goes to Barnes. I, I absolutely believe that. But also your coaching looks much better and your linebackers look much better and your secondary looks much better when your defensive line is being disruptive. Yep. Uh, Stuart asked one last question here. Is the two freshman class the next team to bring us a natty? I, I, you know, four, I, we already said it Four true, four true freshmen started for Ohio state this week. It's a huge number for Ohio state. Four true freshmen is a huge number. Uh, it's Burke. It's uh, JTT started this weekend. Then McCord started. And then obviously everyone's new favorite running back Henderson started. Yeah. It's and Nomad Nomad brings up another um good point. First time in Ohio State history starting a true freshman quarterback and running back. Yeah. yeah. Uh I right, mean Jay. you sure hope so, right? The window is yeah. all when the guys are this good, the window is also very small. Because like we can talk about, oh, look at these guys, these four freshmen are starting. Well, that also means you're only gonna get three years out of them. The window's small. Yep. All right, Jared. I think that is it for today's episode here. Uh, definitely going to be a much more better challenge next week as, as Ohio State gets to travel east to take on Rutgers. By the way, I'm sorry, I want to I want to grab one more of these Ask Sloop Guys questions. Is Al Washington ruining the culture at Ohio State's linebacker unit? Uh, that is from Buckeye Zach. Uh, honestly, like you. And I know we're we're talking, you know, maybe we should spend a, a bit of a moment talking about what was maybe the wildest thing that happened during the Ohio State game, which is you had a, you had a player quit in the in the middle of the game. That's I I don't ever remember seeing that happening at Ohio State before. Uh, Kevon Pope, back I six says Pope kind of proves that I hard disagree. Uh. You have guys in both Gant and Pope who couldn't get on the field. Sorry. You, they couldn't get on the field. 
People complained so much about Ohio State's linebacker unit, whether, you know, whether it be Borland or Warner or whomever else, people cl- complained so much about that linebacker unit that Ohio State had. Guess who couldn't get them off the field? Guess who couldn't take snaps away from them? Ganton Pope. Then the young guys come in behind them and immediately start. You know, on one hand, people complain, oh, I hate when coaches are loyal to the seniors and don't play the younger guys who are clearly better. Well, guess what? This is a consequence of that. And I'm not saying, by the way, they should be playing the best players. They should be playing the best players. I, 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 I don't want to come across like I'm saying that otherwise. But the consequence of playing the best players is sometimes guys get passed over. Big boy football. I'm sorry. This isn't everyone gets to play. This isn't little league. That's it. It's it's and I'm I'm sorry if you feel like you were owed snaps or if you were owed a starting position because you waited your turn. I hate that. I hate we had it this weekend. They were talking about the Mario McCall. Oh, look at this guy. He stayed with the in the age of the transfer portal, in the age of players leaving and taking the da 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 da. Here's a guy who stayed. Screw that. I don't want guys who stay. I want guys who steal starting jobs. If you can't steal a starting job at Ohio State by year two, by year three, you should probably go play for Akron. Sorry. Because if you're not at, if you're not getting snaps, it's because you aren't earning those snaps and you should probably go play somewhere else. I'm sorry. That's big boy college football. Don't wait for your spots. Don't wait for your spots. Steal a spot. Steal snaps. May be so good that they can't not put you on the field. Forget. Oh, he waited his turn. Screw that. I don't want guys who wait turns. I want guys who steal spots. You can't steal a spot. You don't belong at Ohio State. I'm sorry that you feel like you waited your turn and got passed over. Maybe you shouldn't have been waiting. All right. I know we're way over in time and well, I like to talk about that, Jared, but I'll, I'll save it for another time. <laughs> sorry, I got off on a thing there. All right, let's end, let's end this episode. We are way over on time, Jared. All right. Um, vi- visit the sloopcast.com. Join these. I, why can I never get the point correct? Uh, join these crazy dudes down here in the uh, Sloop Cats area by going to our Discord server and also going to our Patreon. For as little as $3 a month, you get full access to all of our uh, sort of bonus digital content, which includes a bonus episode on Wednesdays. It includes access, complete 100% access to our discord server including the premium channels that being said the discord server is also free um and there's plenty of free channels uh we also do a weekly uh social screen is what we've come to call it um where we all watch a game together it's rarely it's not yet been an ohio state game just because so many people tend to just like go to those that we've been watching other games we basically just sort of hang out and chat for four hours and and we watched Wisconsin and Notre Dame play this past weekend, and we've watched a bunch of different games. So, um, again, you can do all of that through Patreon, through the Discord, and that's all I got there. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Nope. Crew wins. Yay, crew. That's it. All right. <laughs> uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you one of my by one of my uh, favorite Columbus. Uh, sort of staple bands in the local Columbus scene. They're called the Floor Walkers. Uh, the name of this song will be 2241. I'm, I don't know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce it or not. Maybe I'm supposed to pronounce it 2241, maybe 2241. Maybe it's 2241. I'm honestly not sure, but that's the name of the song that we're going to be playing for you now. Um, for those of you watching us on YouTube, you don't get the song. Sorry about that. Um, but you can... Um, click the links down in the show notes and you can still hear the song that way because YouTube's YouTube and we, we can't, we can't drop music in here. No, it's not emo. Um, they're kind of a, a soulsy sort of band. Um, so 
With all of that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The Floor Walkers.